This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Worship with Highlands United Methodist Church. My name is Brad Lorvik. I use he, him. It's a joy to be in worship with you this morning. Thank you for navigating the farmer's market. I felt so bad. It's like 45 degrees and they're out there trying to set up. I was like, oh. But it's going to be fantastic throughout the summer. A friendly reminder to to enjoy worship and then wander down the street and get some local produce, enjoy some music and good food. Lots of great stuff happening every weekend around the hood. Uh, glad to get to share these kinds of days together. I uh, want to let you know a few different pieces. One, welcome, welcome. Settle in, make sure you're comfortable. Uh, we got folks taking care of bulletins, things like that. A reminder that we do have child care provided. It is not a requirement. There is not a single noise a child can make in this room that one of our kids hasn't sure. made louder. Um, but we do have the, the uh, rooms upstairs with toys where you can still hear, but the kids can play. And of course, we have our incredibly wonderful background check certified, lovely people running the child care downstairs. So we have lots of great options for you should you need or want. Yeah, good morning. My name is Brandon Cawthon. I use he, him. Um, last week, we sent out an email highlighting all the things that we're doing for Pastor Brad's farewell. We will resend that email this week, but I just wanted to highlight and speak about a few things again. Uh, June 5th is going to be our farewell party out in the garage from 3 to 5. There'll be a presentation at 4 p.m., so if you just want to swing by for a little bit, try to come around for, um, or stay for the whole time. We'll have the, the turf set up, yard games for the kids. It should be a lot of fun. June 12th is his last Sunday. Um, please plan to attend that as well. Also, for the congregational gifts that we are um, putting together, um, we, are at, we are collecting a love offering. You can do that two different ways. You can uh, mark on your check or in, in the envelope, place it in the offering plate, or go online, and then in the comments section, you can place love offering. The other thing we're doing is we are collecting a bunch of videos um, for people to sing, dance, say a message, whatever they would like to for okay, Pastor Brad. Okay, hang on. Um, you keep saying sing and dance and you're scaring people. Okay, I've had people like, just, I'm not gonna just, sing or dance. I just wanted people to know it didn't have to be this serious, uh, you know, thank you for this and that. It can be a goodbye song or jingle or, or the, it can be very serious, whatever Okay, I expect want. to see that from you. For the rest okay. of you, you're welcome to just say a few kind words looking at your camera. Also, speaking of that, if um, internet or that link is a little intimidating, um, I can upload those myself, so please reach out to me. I can record you in church um, if you want to write something out, and then I can do it myself. Also, for those of you watching from home, those of you who are watching from a distance, you can participate in this too. Um, so look for that link. We'll have the link in the bulletin ne next week as well, but we're going to resend that email out this week, so keep an eye out for that. Any questions, reach out to me. <sighs> At this time, I would like to invite Maverick and Joey to bring the light forward as we begin to prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Julia and I use she, her. Please rise as you are able and join me in our call to worship found in your bulletin or on the screen. We have been called to worship to, to celebrate the grace and love we have been given. In this moment, through word and song and community, we remember, remember and rekindle our the connection, connection to the divine. Though worship is not the culmination of God's call, it, it is, is merely, merely a starting point for, for the week, week to come. come. For the new life we receive cannot be bound by walls. And we, we are, are called to step boldly into the world. Our opening hymn is God of Grace and God of Glory. You will find the words in the red hymnal number 577 or on the screen.
Before I start, oh, by the way, I'm Sue Stevenson, and I use she, her. Um, before I start, I would like, if you were a member of the new pastor selection team, would you please stand? If you are a member of the leadership team, would you please stand? If you have said a prayer, answered a phone call, answered an email, oh, all everybody just stand up. <laughs> I want to thank you all, all so very much for your prayers, your concern, your support during this new selection. And now I will read a letter. Dear members, friends of Highlands United Methodist Church, I am excited to share with you that Bishop Karen Oliveto, in co consultation with the Mountain Sky Cabinet and the Highlands United Staff Parish Relations Committee, is announcing the appointment of Reverend Stephanie Price as our new pastor beginning July 1, 2022. I mean, yeah, whatever. Reverend Stephanie currently serves as the founding pastor of the new church start, The Land, in Aurora. She, along with her husband John and their daughter Fiona, are excited to join the congregation and the neighborhood. You will be, able, you will be in my prayers as you say goodbye to Reverend Brad and welcome Reverend Stephanie. This is a neat, unique time to be in transition and welcome a new leader, and I am grateful for all your openness and excitement about what is next for the Highlands United Methodist Church. Dan. Thank you, Sue. And thank you for your leadership. You did a fantastic job with all of this, helping us along the way. Uh, first of all, welcome Pastor Stephanie and her family. We're certainly excited to have you join us. Uh, also today, daughter Fiona is here. She's looking forward to continuation at McIntosh Academy in Littleton in a few weeks, and she'll be attending Littleton High School in the fall. A bit more background on, Stephanie, on Pastor Stephanie. Uh, most recently, she served as the founding pastor as the, at The Land UMC in Aurora. Uh, she, yeah, you can Google that, check it out. Um, she she uh, founded that uh, organization in uh, 2018 as a seed church from Hope UMC. Uh, prior to the land, she served at Hope UMC as pastor of discipleship uh, in Greenwood Village from 2010 to 2018. Uh, Stephanie also served as associate pastor at Evergreen UMC. And as Sue said, we invite you to take a few minutes to review her unique and impressive work that she did at www.thelandaurora.org. Uh, she did some incredible things at the land and, and achieved a lot. And we're very proud of what she did there. Uh, Pastor Stephanie is a graduate of UNC in Greeley and also the Iliff School of Theology. She enjoys hiking, spending time with her two fur babies, uh, and her outings with her family, Fiona, and husband, John Morrison. John is a, on the all-state emergency disaster team, so he does a lot of traveling based on what's happening around the country. So welcome, Pastor Stephanie. We're certainly glad you're with us. Um, as they make their way back down, I'd love to invite all the children to come up and join us for children's time. Uh, we sing a children's motto together. Uh, the words will be on the screen. everybody. It's so great to see all of you this morning. Of course, all of those that are here with us. And would you guys look back there at the cameras and wave? Because we've got friends watching and participating from home. It's so good to know that they're with us too. Will and Stella and Ariana. Some folks always send me pictures letting me know that they're worshiping and enjoying stuff at home. And that's always really fun. I'm so glad that you're here and that you get to be part of worship. I want to make sure you remember that our congregation isn't complete without you. Our church needs you to help us do and be all of the things God invites us to do and be. 
And of course, I'm also excited to see Dwayne the donkey this morning. And I wondered if you would help me let him know it's children time. Can we yell Dwayne on the count of three? One, two, three. Dwayne! Oh, oh, good morning to you. Well, good morning, well, Dwayne. Well, well, I tell you, there isn't a donkey in the whole wide world with a better group of friends. Well, Sunday mornings are, are they're, they're my favorite part of the week, and I, and I, I hope that they never change. Uh, you know, speaking of that, Pastor Brad, <laughs> I, I think we need to talk. Of course, Dwayne. Uh, what's on your mind? Well, you know, you and I have both been so busy, and so we haven't really had time to deal with a rumor that I heard going around. Well, I know I don't like rumors, Dwayne. Uh, so I'm glad you're coming to talk with me directly. What's going on? Well, you know, I, I heard some folks saying that you're leaving and that you're not going to be the pastor here anymore. Well, Dwayne, that's not a rumor, my friend. And I'm sorry you didn't get to hear it officially as the announcement, but, but it's always better to th hear things directly. So let me just tell you, I am. I'm, I'm moving. Well, well don't. <laughs> Dwayne, I, uh, I see your feelings, my friend, and, and I tell you, I've had some big ones myself, too. My whole family has. It's not easy to leave the people and the donkeys that you love so much, and I tell you, we sure love this place. Well, well, then why would you leave, Pastor Brad? Well, Dwayne, did you know that I haven't always been the pastor here? Well, you've been a, a, around as long as I've been here. Yeah, and it's easy to forget, though, that pastors move and change and go to different places to meet different needs at different times. You know, for as long as there have been Methodist pastors, there have been moments when the bishop tells us that we're going to be moving churches. Well, can't you just tell her no? <laughs> well, I tell you, if I told her no the last time she asked me to move, I never would have gotten to come here. Our whole Methodist system depends on pastors and churches trusting that God works through people like Bishop Karen and Superintendent Rooks, and I tell you, both of those are people that I know and trust. All right, then. Well, well then, I'll get my suitcase and I'll come with you. I bet my mom wouldn't even notice for like at least an hour. I'll be right back. Dwayne, no, Dwayne, Dwayne, don't grab the suitcase, buddy. The congregation needs you here. I, you guys, we need Dwayne here, and it's just like the congregation needs every person who calls this place home, every single one of the kids, every single one of the adults, all of these beautiful people, and you make Highlands what it is. In fact, one of the reasons I know things are going to be okay here is because I know the amazing people who make this church what it is will still be here. Yeah. Well, you know, we do have some amazing people. Mm-hmm. They greet people with smiles. Mm -hmm. Well, they help around the church. They sure do. They care for people in need, too, yeah. and, and show the world what it looks like to live like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, you said that the people are here. One of the reasons you yeah. know that, that everything will be okay. Are there, are there more reasons, Brad? You know, there's another reason I know things will be more than okay. There is a reason I'm excited for the whole congregation. In fact... Let me introduce you to a friend of mine. Hey, Pastor Stephanie, can you come here for a minute? Dwayne, kids, I want you to meet my friend, Pastor Stephanie. Come on up. She is going to be the new pastor here starting in July, and I thought maybe she could come say hello. Good morning. I'm so excited to be here with all of you. Oh, we get to meet her? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, hey, Pastor Stephanie, uh, so I got a couple questions for you. What's your favorite color? And then do you prefer stuffed animals or a blanket? And what's your favorite subject in school? And do you have a little baby donkey brother? And what music do you listen to? How, how Wait, do you Dwayne, get here? Dwayne, do you have Dwayne, a car? Hang on, hang on. There will be lots of time for questions. There are going to be all sorts of get-togethers and gatherings, maybe some hangouts in people's backyards, and basically like playdates for all of us to be together and ask questions like that. Well, that's good news, because I want to ask you lots of questions, too, Duane. Actually, I can't wait to get to know all of you. Waiting is so hard, especially when it's something you're so excited to wait for. I was hoping that all of you could help me be patient while I am waiting. I was hoping some of you could write me notes or draw me pictures so I can learn some of the wonderful things that make you, you. I even brought postcards all ready to go in the mail once you have a chance to write a note or draw a picture. And for those participating at home, we're going to include it in the children's mailer this week. So you can send me something too. 
Mm -hmm. oh, well, that's pretty awesome. Well, I love, uh, I love that you want to get to know us too, Stephanie. Can I ask you one question today, though? Of course. Stephanie, will you, will you help us keep building a home where all belong? Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. God's love is so big, no one ever gets left out. That's what I love about being a pastor. I get to remind people that no matter what mistakes they make or what awards they win, God loves them just the same. On our bad days and on our best days, we are always a part of God's great big family. I cannot wait to join you in sharing God's love for all people. It's one of the reasons I am so excited to be part of this community. Hmm. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much, Steph. Hey, hey, Pastor Brad. Yeah, no, hey, hey, Brad, she seems pretty awesome. She is pretty awesome. Oh, that's great. Okay. Okay. Well, hey, I was wondering, maybe um, we're going to hand out the cards for you all to fill. You, so Pastor Stephanie brought these beautiful note cards where you can draw your pictures and write her notes and then mail them to her. And as was mentioned, they'll be in the mailing for those of you who participate from home. These beautiful things are all ready for you. And then I wondered if maybe we could all say a prayer together and teach Pastor Stephanie the children's motto. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's do a prayer real quick, and then we'll hand all those out for you guys, okay? Would you guys pray with me? Dear God, dear God, in times of change, in times of change, help us remember, help us remember that you are always with us. That you are always with us. May we share our feelings honestly. May we share our feelings honestly and welcome new people warmly. And welcome new people warmly. And may I always remember. And may I always remember that you love me. That you love me. Amen. Amen. Okay, can we show Pastor Stephanie how we do the children's motto? In, in all, all, that, all we that we think, think in, in all, all that, that we say, in, in all that we do, may we glorify, glorify you. Amen. Oh, Come meet Pastor Stephanie and grab a note card. I think one of the unique gifts of our time in worship together is a moment to receive the ministry of music. And I want to thank Peter for offering that for us today.
Thanks, Peter. If you've ever wondered, I wonder what song Brad listens to when his soul is weary and he needs a place to just sort of rejuvenate. That's the song. <laughs> that's, that's the song. Thanks, Peter. As we come to a time of prayer, one of the things we do each week is, is listen to voices from home, recognizing that each voice we hear is a representation of the many voices and the many needs and the many prayers that we carry as a community. And I believe Devin Mills will be offering us uh, an answer to the question, what are you praying for this week? Good morning. Um, so for our world, you know, I've been praying for more tolerance and just having more appreciation for the lightness when we see it um, amongst all this, this recent darkness. Um, so that's what I'm praying for, for the world, for our church. Um, you know, I think strength is really important um, anytime, right? Um, with all these transitions coming up, I would just pray for, you know, safety of travels from with Brad and his family and the next steps for the church community with Highlands. Um, with our family, I pray for gentle hands, as silly as that sounds. It's it's a struggle, um, so I really am just asking for, for, for strength for my kids to be able to have that, that calm body and gentle hands. Um, with my husband and I, um, I'm praying for just more acceptance. Um, and with myself, I'm praying for grace to be able to come as I am without having that that guilt or the feeling of perfectionism. Good morning. Thank you, Devin. I appreciate that transparency and the honesty of what life brings at so many different levels. As we continue in this time of prayer, we're going to sing the first verse of We Utter Our Cry. You'll find it in the red hymnal number 439, or of course, words on screen, but let us join in singing together. God of grace and God of highlands, hear our prayers as we gather together as your people, those prayers we speak aloud and those prayers we hold silently in our hearts. We do ask this day, O oh God, that you would grant us wisdom and you would grant us courage. For we need both in the dealings with the world around us and our own internal work of being human. Grant unto us the wisdom to recognize we are not alone. Grant unto us the courage to then ask for the care and support of community and for your love and grace to be present. Grant unto us the wisdom to see a path before us and the courage to take the first step. Even if we're not sure if we can make the whole journey, the first step, God, grant us that, that courage. Grant us the wisdom to recognize the lives around us are just as full of difficulty and stress and frustration as ours are. Grant under us the wisdom to see it and grant us the courage to offer grace. And as we look around at a world in need, we ask that you would grant us the wisdom to see your presence, that you, O oh God, have not abandoned us but are with us and grant us the courage to be living examples of that presence in all that we do as we go out into the world living like Jesus did, just as we now pray the prayer he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'll remain seated for our next hymn, but I invite you to grab uh, your black hymnal and turn to page 2128 as we join in singing, Come and Find the Quiet Center. In complete transparency, I have been crying a lot recently. I have cried many times about the upcoming move. I cried with Megan as we had to make a decision and tell the bishop if we would even move forward in conversation with Fort Collins. I cried as I spent a Saturday for three hours calling all the members of the leadership team to let them know what to expect the next morning. I certainly got teary as the announcement was made, and I stood here with my family in front of you. And then in random moments as I'm just going through my day, sometimes the feelings well up and I find myself unexpectedly teary, like, where did that come from? Well, I'll tell you where it came from. It's grief. This is what grief looks like and feels like. And there are days I try to trivialize my feelings. Oh, it's not that far. Oh, you knew this day would come. You know, stuff like that, right? I try to tamp it down that way. There are other days I try to somehow balance it out, remembering that I'm going to a church that shares my values and love for serving the community, that I've been invited to serve a church where some of my biggest heroes and mentors have served and what that means, right? And so that should just balance it all out and my feelings shouldn't be a problem. (laughs) Yeah, it doesn't work. I mean, all of those things are true. It's not that far and it is a really awesome church, but none of it negates the love I have for all of you. And the love I have for what God is doing through you in this place, it's been hard. And by the grace of God and the wisdom of our bishop and superintendent, it got a little easier this week. You see, I was sitting on my front porch, not knowing who was going to arrive, but sitting there waiting for someone to come around the corner of the church building. And I tell you, I was elated to see my friend and colleague, Reverend Stephanie Price. 
after showing her the house and watching her walk into the garage to meet with the transition team, I cried again. But this time it was really refreshing to shed tears of joy, to know that things are going to be okay. You see, transitions are a part of ministry. We, we know this. We do this. We live this. They've always been a part of ministry. They've been a part of ministry since the very beginning. In fact, I want you to take a listen to our scripture today. It's from the opening chapter of the book of Joshua. Now, before we play it, Simon, I want to give a little shout out. Our scripture today is being read by Jack Carzian, who almost at this very moment is sitting on a stage somewhere here in Denver about to graduate from North High School. I'm really bummed. I'm a school board member. I'm supposed to be there. I was going to get to help hand him his diploma, but then they scheduled the graduation for a Sunday morning. So I'm here. But so is Jack. Thanks. After Moses, the Lord's servant, died, the Lord spoke to Joshua, Nun's son. He was Moses' helper. My servant Moses is dead. Now get ready to cross over the Jordan with this entire people to the land that I am going to give to the Israelites. I am giving you every place where you set foot, exactly as I promised Moses. No one will be able to stand up against you during your lifetime. I will be with you in the same way I was with Moses. I won't desert you or leave you. Be brave and strong, because you are the one who will help this people take possession of the land which I pledged to give to their ancestors. Be very brave and strong as you carefully obey all of the instruction that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Don't deviate even a bit from it, either to the right or left. Then you will have success wherever you go. Never stop speaking about this instruction scroll. Recite it day and night so you can carefully obey everything written in it. Then you will accomplish your objectives and you will succeed. I've commanded you to be brave and strong, haven't I? Don't be alarmed or terrified because the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. When I got here, he was younger than Joey is now. I tell you. Oh... I want to set some context for this scripture. Right here we are, the people heading back home to their land as leadership transitions. So let me set the scene a little bit in a different way. Uh, when I was in, in graduate school, when I was at the Isle of School of Theology, actually we overlapped there for a while, didn't we, Stephanie? When I was there, my field education, part of it was working in the bishop's office. I clerked for the Episcopal office, and while I was there clerking, it always irked me that there was a giant photo of the bishop. I'm talking like two feet by three feet in its frame, right next to the door, there's the bishop. And I'm like, really? I guess my problem wasn't with him. It was this tradition of giant photos, right? Like you walk up to the office, there's this giant photo of the bishop there. Blessed is the meek bishop. Um, one day I was talking to my field ed supervisor about it, and he asked me if I'd ever taken time to glance further down the hall. Because right next to the picture of our current bishop was the previous bishop's photo. And right next to that was the one who was previous to her and the one previous to him. It actually was this giant collection all the way down the hall. For me, this was just amplifying the problem. Look how many big pictures we purchased and hung on the wall. But then my, my supervisor says to me, Brad, I love that every bishop has to walk past the photos of every bishop who served before them. It reminds them that the work is bigger than them and that someday they're just going to get scooted down the wall as a new photo gets hung. That's what this scripture is reminding God's people today. This opening chapter of Joshua talks about leadership and care and ministry and God's people. The scripture today in Joshua is about the mantle of service being passed. And as a pastor, I identify in multiple ways with this scripture. When I think of leaving Highlands, I connect with Moses, right? A, a leader who journeyed with people he loved to follow God's call. As I think of Pastor Stephanie answering God's call to lead the people where God has planned next, right? There's a Joshua moment. But then I think of Fort Collins where I'm the Joshua, and I think of the land where Pastor Stephanie is right now. You're the Moses there, and I'm the Joshua there. I don't know. There's a lot of Joshuas and Moseses running around this time of year. I took a little time this week to look at the pastor plaques in the history room. I don't know if you know, we have a history room down the hall, and there's these beautiful plaques that have names and names and names. Mine's right there. There's a year and a dash, and soon there will be another year at the end of that dash. 
And I think about all of the names. These aren't just names. These are pastors who have served in this place, a documentation of all who have been appointed to serve alongside this congregation. On these plaques, you will find the names of the pastors who navigated this congregation from a barn across the street into their very first building. You're going to find the folks who during the Depression somehow found the effort and communal energy to build the room we're sitting in right now. On these plaques, you will find the name of the pastor who chased the KKK out of this building and out of this congregation. On these plaques, you're going to find the names of pastors who consoled people in the congregation as church members went off to the World War and then the Second World War or to Korea or Vietnam or Iraq or Afghanistan. So many names. On these plaques, you're going to find the name of the pastor who officiated Ellie Lindstrom's wedding. On these plaques, you're going to find the name of the pastors that baptized Kathy Moore's kids and Marion Brackett's kids. Mind you, those little babies now attend here with their own grandchildren sometimes running around. Some of the pastors on these plaques preached to standing room only. Others barely had enough people in the room to pay the bills. On this list of names, you'll find the first pastor of color to serve this congregation. You'll also find the first pastor who was a woman. In fact, just before my name, you're going to find two names of the pastors who helped this congregation become reconciling as we seek to live God's love for all people. So many Moseses, so many Joshuas. But honestly, this scripture isn't about the pastors, whether they be past, present, or future. Blessed are the meek, Bradley. It's not about you. This scripture is about God and God's people. The scripture we heard read today is about highlands. The scripture is about you. Because it is to you that God says, I will be with you. It's to you in the scripture that God says, I will not desert or leave you. It is to you that God says, you will have success in all that you do. That's the invitation, isn't it? The invitation of Easter, the invitation of resurrection, the invitation of grace and life, we're invited to go out into the world. And as we do so, we hear the promise of God saying, I will go with you. The scripture is about God's promise to you. Now, I will say, God does ask for some participation. Y'all have some responsibility here, okay? God asks, Carefully obey all the instruction I have given. God says, never stop speaking about what you have learned. So a friendly reminder, it is your responsibility as God's people. It's also your opportunity as God's church to live the love, acceptance, justice, and hope of Jesus in all that you do. It is your responsibility as God's people. It's your opportunity as God's church to build a home where all belong. It's your responsibility and your opportunity to live the values posted so boldly on the outside of our building. That's how we walk into the world, knowing we will be assured of our success wherever we go. Because that's what it is to be God's people, to live those values in all that we do knowing that God has promised to be with us. That's what it is to be God's people, to welcome others, be they first-time guests, occasional attenders, every week regulars, online participants, or even pastors, that we invite these people to walk with us as we journey, to join in service to those who may never attend here but want to participate in the values they find so attractive. This is what it is to be God's people. I don't think it's a secret that I'm a bit of a church nerd. Okay, I'm an immeasurable church nerd. My nerdiness is, is unmeasurable, I promise. So it probably will not surprise you that I've spent a lot of time studying every aspect of John Wesley's life. Uh, John Wesley was the founder of Methodism, and I spend so much time reading all of his stuff. It's like my happy place. Um, and he was the one who actually encouraged pastors to move. And back in his day, it was every single year. In fact, if you look at these plaques, you'll notice it's like 82, 83, 84, 85, uh, 96, 98. Like, it's just every single year like clockwork. It was just the expectation. 
That was him along with the first Methodist bishops, uh, Bishop Koch and Bishop Asbury. They asked congregations to not build their identity around a pastor, but instead build their identity around their relationship to God in their community. That's the invitation. Now, John Wesley and those early bishops, they knew it wasn't easy. But you see, John Wesley had an understanding of why everything would be okay even though pastors would come and go. John Wesley knew why the people called Methodist would be able to carry God's love and grace forward despite all the transition. And that belief is captured in his final words. Not his final sermon, not his final letter to someone, the literal last words he spoke as he laid dying. With his very last breath, John Wesley uttered the words, Best of all, God is with us. Best of all, God is with us. In the face of the ultimate transition, this was his hope. This was his truth. And as we encounter our transitions in life, not just this moment, but all the transitions each and every day in all of our complex lives in this complex world, the goodbyes, the hellos, and the where do we go from here? May those words be our hope and truth as well. That best of all, God is with us. Amen. God is... God is at work in this place through you. Our work in the community each and every day is a result of your generosity. Please join me as we prayfully reflect on the many ways and reasons we give. In response to the love you have given us, God, we offer here what we have, what we do, and even more who we are, that our generosity might transform the world. Amen.
Let us join our hearts and voices together in the sending prayer found in your bulletin or on the screen. God, God of life, life the, the glow of, of Easter still, still, and we, we celebrate the power and presence of that incredible day. Through your, your love and grace, we have not only been given new life, but a call, call to share life abundant with the world. In how we live and in how we love our neighbor, may we carry your grace in all that we do. For you, O God, are not content to be worshipped from a distance, but desire that we walk with you into the world. Amen. Our sending hymn is God of the Bible, number 3030, in the green hymnal or on the screen. couple notes about today, one note about next week, and then a word of blessing for your departure. Uh, related to today, at noon in the parking lot, we have a little tailgate party, housewarming for the house we built in Guatemala, and information about the new one we're building. Instead of taking the trip ourselves, 
we're actually going to invest the money in the local economy to allow local people to do the work, which is a beautiful and healthy way to create change in the world. But all of us can get the updates and be a part of the virtual team. You've never seen construction with less dust. It's going to be fantastic. So you'll learn a little bit more, and we'll get you all signed up so you can get those updates and emails. It'll be fantastic. Another thing about today, I do invite you to wander up and take a look. Like, you're, you know, you're allowed in this space, right? There's no invisible wall there. So come check it out and see some of the names and think about some of the, the things this congregation has seen in its life. Now, next week, because it's a holiday weekend, means it's a brown bag sermon. We haven't done one of these in a while because of the pandemic. So here's how this works. This week, I'm going to send out an email. And if you are interested in throwing your name in the hat, you do so electronically, and then we'll pull names and let someone know by the end of the week. I'm going to preach two different sermons next Sunday, one at each service, because I don't know what it's going to be on yet. The way this works is someone brings an object inside of a brown paper bag, right? A randomly selected individual. I pull it out at the beginning of the service. I come up with the sermon impromptu based on that item as the illustration of the sermon. If you've not been here when we do this, oh, we have seen everything. Um, it has been wild. I think the first one I ever did was buffalo poop. Uh, one of the most interesting ones was a small doll of Charlie Chaplin that looked like Hitler. There's some very interesting things I've preached on on these Sundays. You will not want to miss it. So please hear that invitation, watch your email, and then throw your name in the hat for that. I need your help. Um, I offer you a word of blessing as we head out into the world together. Life brings a lot. And best of all, God is with us. May you be blessed and be a blessing as we live that life together. Amen.
<laughs> you draw like a pencil or a pencil or a Most, the most I've seen from Macintosh kids and little kids from time 